Hi there. So, you want to know a little bit about sunspots. Well, I am the guy to tell you a little bit about sunspots. And in this video, what I'd like to do is to explain what sunspots tell us about the sun. And so maybe you're wondering, what exactly is a sunspot? Well, this is a sunspot. Um, what we're looking at here is the surface of the sun, which is called the photosphere. And the photosphere, on the photosphere, the sunspots show up as these kind of black pimple-like splotches. Um, and you'll notice that there's an inner part of it that's really black, and then just a, an area around it that is not quite as dark. Um, so what do we know? Well, they're dark. Um, we also know that they form in groups, and what they are are magnetic field disturbances in the sun. So you're looking at a magnetic field not doing what it normally is doing. And as a result, that f causes heat not to flow as, as smoothly. And so this area shows up as slightly cooler than the surrounding sun. It's still hot enough to, to melt you, but it's maybe a thousand degrees Kelvin uh, cooler. So here's what a sunspot looks like up close, and again, um, this area over here, this is what the normal sun looks like. You've got these little areas right in here, these are called granules, and a sunspot is going to disrupt that, and so what you're looking at here are some of the, the kind of evidences of that this is a disturbance. It's um, Probably the best way I can say it is the sun is not behaving like it normally does. Okay? So when you look at this picture, what do you see? Well, I see starting in 1996 and going all the way around here, you have images of the sun. And these images are in um, the ultraviolet. And so you're looking at kind of the high energy part of the sun. And you'll notice in 1996 and in 2006, the sun looks pretty dark, but when you get down to 2001, holy smokes, look at this. It, I mean, it is really active. And so we seem to be not very active, and we grow to a peak here, and then we decrease in activity back here. And so it's a period of about 11 years, 10 to 11 years, there seems to be something happening on the sun. Okay. So, um, what follows here are three graphs, and these are the same graphs that you worked with in class, and again, if you are listening to this, my guess is you're trying to make sense of this. So, when I look at this graph, um, what do I see? I'm looking at the monthly average sunspot numbers, okay? And I'm starting in 1750, and this goes to 1850, 1850 to 1950, 1950 to today. What do you notice? Yes, that's exactly what I see also. I see a regular rise and fall. You know, if I'm to rise and fall of sunspots. And if I did the math here, what I would be finding is that they rise and they fall in about a 10 year, 10 to 11 year span of time. Hmm. And here is the last 13 years or so of solar activity. Notice we had, again, this we're talking about sunspot number here. So we've got a lot of sunspots happening on the sun, decreases. Until if you look at um, 2009, 2010, I remember teaching back then, and we didn't have a sunspot on the sun almost the entire year. And now we are back on the rise again here. So this is what we would call, um, I believe it doesn't say it anywhere on here, this is cycle 24 that we're in. 
Okay. Then, graph here. And this graph kind of throws everybody. Um, you've got two separate things going on here. Up in this area right here, you have latitude. And you notice EQ stands for the equator. This is 30 degrees south, 90 degrees south, 30 degrees north, 90 degrees north. And then you have time along this horizontal scale. And on the bottom, you have the same sunspot graph that we were looking at before. Um, this is the average daily sunspot area, or this is the percent of the visible hemisphere being covered by um, sunspots. And you'll notice as the sunspots start off at the beginning of the cycle, they are away from the equator. And as the cycle goes towards the end of the cycle, these sunspots are occurring towards the equator. A very peculiar phenomena. And I don't think we have a really good model to explain it. We, we see it, we understand, or we believe it's true, but if you try to come up with an explanation of this, it is not real clear. One of those mysteries. And this last graph here, is again, this is actually giving you a little wider range of time. And, and my question here, I actually wrote it down. What do you notice about the number of sunspots over this time period? And we're looking at the last 400 so years of time. Yeah. <laughs> you look at this area right here. And the question that you have is, what the heck is going on with the sun here? This period of time where it was an extended period of time where the sun did not behave in this normal cycle that you see here. It basically had no sunspots for any, a, a length of time, almost 45 years. And they call this the Maunder Minimum. What I would suggest you do, uh, if you've got any technology, um, Google Maunder Minimum and see what happened on the earth at that point in time. Okay. What do you need to remember about this? Well, you need to know that sunspots occur in a 10 to 11 year cycle. And that sunspots are visible evidence that our sun is a variable star. 2013, the year they're in right now, is predicted to be the peak year of this cycle. So we should be seeing more sunspots. Um, the sun should be more active. Um, and there are times in our history where we've seen a prolonged absence of sunspots, which leads to less solar energy being released, and I bet you you're going to read about global cooling. Okay? Thank you.